Um, if you notice, we're doing things a little bit different this morning. We're going to switch up the uh, services a little bit and um, <coughs> continue until after the sermon. Uh, we did this uh, previously. Uh, once ever, ever blue moon, I, I guess I would say, we try to change things up a little bit just to uh, keep things fresh and to uh, keep people awake, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, we'll be having worship, and then I'll be getting up to preach, and then after the invitation, we'll have our time of communion, um, and then uh, have our closing uh, uh, song and uh, announcements and all that at the end. Um, today's sermon is a little bit different. It's probably something you probably never even, I, I'm not sure if you've ever had a sermon like this before. I've did it <clears throat> at other churches I've been to, but it's a state of the church address. Most of us are familiar with uh, the state of the union address uh, or the state of the state where the governor gives uh, a state of, of, of our state here in Ohio. The, the president gives a state of the union as far as our country. Uh, I hope it's not won't be that boring for you, <laughs> and it definitely won't be that long. Um, but one of the reasons uh, that our nation has a state of the union, or individual states have a state of the state address, is basically to let people know what's going on, uh, what's what we've done um, to be successful in the past, uh, what we need to do to be successful in the future, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, when you're offering a state of something, you are offering uh, a particular condition that someone or something is in at a specific time. In other words, when I'm talking about the state of the church, what I'm talking about is the health of the church. You know, what, what condition is the church in? And unfortunately, not all churches are healthy, uh, and not all churches address the issues that they have in their church, and that's why they have struggles and, and have problems. I know personally, I've been involved in two churches that have, uh, that have uh, dwindled down quite a bit since I've been there uh, because of, of unhealthy or certain issues within the church. Uh, whether that's poor leadership, whether that's uh, not reaching out and, and uh, doing evangelism and outreach and getting new members, or it can be many things that happen in a church that cause <coughs> churches uh, to uh, dwindle or fall apart, uh, even have splits and things like that. Uh, but what I want to do this morning is examine our condition here at the Edina Road Church of Christ, uh, where we are currently and what we need to do to be spiritually healthy and some of the things that, that we're doing. Uh, last year, I, I preached a sermon talking about uh, the mission of the church and the vision of the church and the purpose of the church, uh, those type of things. And all churches, I've said before, have the same mission. You know, Our goal as a church is to reach lost people with the gospel message of Jesus Christ and uh, to make disciples once those people become Christians. And so the mission doesn't ever change. But a lot of churches go about get, uh, completing or fulfilling that mission in different ways. And then some people um, have gotten off the mission and are focused on uh, different things. Some people just focus on having church one week to the next. You know, As long as we can pay the bills, we'll keep having church here. Uh, some people put a lot of effort and energy into their, their facilities and they don't put any energy on, in their people. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of uh, energy in their programming uh, and the things that they do, the things that they maintain, their traditions and things like that, and then they don't spend a lot of time um, dealing with you know, developing leaders in the church, developing outreach programs and evangelism, stuff like that. So there's lots of things that go on. But the important thing for us to do as a church, and we, I do this as the minister, we do this as, as leaders in the church, elders, and and the board, we, you know, we talk about these type of things, and it's important to do that. But even as church members, we should also examine ourselves. One of the things we do when we gather around the Lord's table, what are we supposed to do? Examine ourselves. You know, and examine ourselves as an evaluation of myself. You know, am I where I need to be with God? Is there anything in between me and God? We can do that as a church as well. You know, you know are we on the right path? Are we going in the right direction? Are we doing the things we need to do? Um, to stay healthy and to be healthy and to grow the church spiritually, uh, those sort of things. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul said, Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. 
Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you, unless, of course, you fail the test? And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. And so, that's the question for us this morning as we examine ourselves as a church and as individual Christians. You know, are we in the faith? You know, if we examine ourselves, are we doing all the things that we need to be doing? And are we doing those things in healthy ways? The first thing I want us to look at is the current state of the church. You know, where we're at. I've been here a little over two and a half years. And so I can only speak about the church since I've been here. You know, I, I can't, you know, we, some of you all have been here a lot longer and you can talk about different ministers and different programs and different difficult times in the church and good times and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, I can't do that. I can only speak of it since I've been here. And a year and ten months of that time has been under COVID. Uh, and, and so I wasn't, I wasn't here seven or eight months when COVID hit. And so that was a, a, a difficult thing for all of us to go through. You know, we shut down as a church. We didn't have services here for about two and a half months during 2020. And then we ran limited programming for, for quite a while. We started back with just a church service on Sunday mornings. And eventually we added back uh, the small group meetings. Uh, and then just this past fall, just a few months ago in September, we started back Sunday school and children's program again. So that's still fairly new in what we did. And so we've had all of that to deal with. However, despite COVID and despite all the things being different, um, there are some positives. Um, in 2021, uh, we uh, added five new members to the church, uh, four by transfer, one by baptism, and so we had five new members in 2021. Uh, in 2020, we had three new members, and then in 2019, uh, we had five new members. And so that kind of shows you uh, what uh, we've had since um, I've been here. Now, 2019 is a little bit deceitful because two of those new members was me and Cheryl. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, so that really, technically, I guess we only had uh, three new members in that time, uh, not counting us. But obviously, when you come to preach at a church, you place your membership to, to the church and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, number of speaking, I think that's that's pretty decent. Um, you know, when churches are smaller, you know, we're a church of of uh, under seventy five or, or whatever you want to call it. So, you know, you don't have quite as many visitors or typically quite as many. Uh, decisions or those type of things as say bigger churches. You know, I've been involved. You know, I've served in churches that were, were over 300 and over 400 on, uh, as a youth minister. So uh, I've been in some bigger churches and served on staff in bigger churches. And so you, you typically see more visitors and, and, and uh, more uh, decisions. Um, and that's just the way it is. However, um, I personally, I don't know, uh, I like to set goals. I'm kind of a goal setter. Uh, I, I personally would like to double that number in, in 2022. I'd like to have 10 new members in 2022. And honestly, I would really like to say, let's say, get 22 new members in 2022. Uh, that's a big goal, but, but the, the important thing is getting members uh, to our church, it takes all of us. Uh, you know, we have a website, and we have a Facebook page, and we put our sermons out there, and I know some people... Um, have heard about our church or came to our church from those things. But I'm telling you, the best evangelistic tool is church members, me and you. Us telling people about Jesus, sharing our faith with people, inviting people to church, inviting people to something we're doing here. Um, the, the way the church grows is through all of us. You know, we can't rely on the preacher to do it or the elders to do it. We can't just rely on hoping people drive by and see our church sign want to go there, or they stumble across our Facebook page or our website, or heaven forbid they get on YouTube and stumble across one of my sermons. Uh, one of the kids was making fun of me because our, uh, our, web, our YouTube page uh, only has four subscribers. Uh, like, well, you only got four subscribers at church. I said, well, people don't really subscribe to me. I said, they probably don't even know how to subscribe to it. Uh, YouTube's all about how many subscribers you have. But anyway... Those are, are great tools, and, and I hope people see those, and it's good to get our name out there and, and people. Uh, and I know some of our new members and people who have started coming since I've been here came because they found us online and they found us on um, the website or, or heard the sermons. I'm always surprised, like, you listen to my sermon and you still came? I mean, that, that, that doesn't impress me. But, uh, but 
But anyway, those are just some, some physical numbers. Uh, looking at the numbers, uh, our average attendance in 2021 was 52 on average. The highest attendance we had was 70, one, uh, and that was just about a month ago. We had 70, and the lowest number we had this year was 38. And that was a, a day that the weather was bad, and we, you know, those sort of things. So you have to keep that in account. But overall, we averaged uh, 52 in attendance. Um, now, financially speaking, um, when I arrived here uh, back in 2020, we had about $8,900 in the bank, which I would like to have $8,900 in the bank, but as a church, that may not, not seem like very much. Uh, but we have did fairly well financially as a church over the past couple of years. Uh, I know a lot of churches struggled during the pandemic. You know, uh, people weren't giving and people weren't sending in their offering and people weren't doing those things. But, but we have been able to, uh, uh, to continue to do well. You all have been faithful givers. You continue to support the work of the church. Uh, and I, as I look over the numbers, every year, uh, 29, at the end of 2019, it was up to a little over 19,000. 2020, uh, a little over 46,000. And at the end of this past month, we, we had about $65,000 in the bank. Uh, and some of that's been moved to a savings. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but, but every month uh, we stick a financial statement back there at the Welcome Center, if anybody's ever interested in that. Um, I don't want too many people to see it because you don't realize how overpaid I am. Uh, <laughs> I think that's not worth that. Uh, but anyway, and I don't, I'm not saying that, uh, I'm not saying this that you think, oh, we've got a bunch of money where I can stop giving. That's, that's, we're actually in a, in a place where we should be. You know, we should be um, the, the thing about being in a church, you know, it, it's like any other organization or any other family. It takes money to, to, to do the things the church does. I mean, we have utilities and bills like every other church. Uh, we have to buy Sunday school materials. We have to, 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 to uh, pay for certain things. And so we have those type of things like anybody else does or any other business or any other family. Uh, but then another thing I'll get into here in a little bit is we have a facility, a grounds, and a building to take care of. And this building, um, the church has been around since 1964, but this building was built in 1968. So this building is older than me. <laughs> and with older buildings, it becomes, you know, you have to start doing maintenance and upkeep and keep the building up or it's going to fall apart. And so, you know, there's always those type of things that, that come up. So we need to think about those things. But the important thing is I wanted to let you know that, hey, you all have been faithful givers and that we've done well and, and to keep that up. I mean, what you give is between you and God, but I always encourage people to give God their best. You know? uh, whether you're giving 1% or 5% or 10% or 20%, you know, we all should give back. And when you give to the church, you're giving to God. You, know, you need to understand that. I know people who get mad, and I've been involved in churches where people have gotten mad and didn't like a decision, so they stopped giving to the church because they're mad at the church. And I've told them over and over again, you're not hurting the church, you're hurting yourself because you're giving to God, you know, through the church. And uh, that, you know, we need to, to get that in our mindset that when we give to the church, we're actually giving to God. And it's our job as leaders of the church to be good stewards of that. But there's a, there's a, uh, 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 I've talked about the statistics, um, and I know numbers can be boring uh, uh, about the financials or talking about uh, numbers, but numbers are a telltale. You can't always tell things by numbers. But I can see that since I've been here, the, the going on the third year of being here, our attendance has went up a little bit. Despite you know, I know we're in COVID, we're in a pandemic, and so numbers are probably uh, not typically fair because some people can't be here because of COVID. Um, but our finances, well, I've seen that they've steadily uh, been on the rise, and we've, we're off there financially healthy in that regard. So that's good news. I don't have any bad news to talk about that. I think that's good news uh, for us to talk about. Psalm 67 6 says, The land yields its harvest. God or God blesses us. So I want you to keep in mind God is the one who adds to the church, God is the one who blesses the church. Uh, our job as members of the church is to be faithful. Uh, to use the gifts God gives us, to use the things God gives us. You know, if you can give of your time, that's great. If, if you are fortunate and blessed financially, you can give financially, that's great. If you can give uh, in other ways of yourself, to teach or to serve, uh, you know, all of those things God gives us, 
and God allows us to be a part of. But ultimately, when we talk about church growth, I mean, God is the one who blesses the church. Um, you know, I've heard people say, oh, I, you know, I led someone to Christ, or I did this or did that. But, but honestly, I feel like, you know, God, the Holy Spirit, uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Holy Spirit is what, what adds people to the church, adds people uh, to the church. And so we always need to keep that in mind. Even though God has blessed us financially, or God has blessed us with these talents and abilities that we all have, you know, we simply are good, we want to be good stewards of those things individually and as a church as a whole to give back to God. And I believe the more you give God, the more He's going to bless you. Now, I'm not saying, you know, hey, if you give God $1,000, He's going to give you back $5,000. I know there's a lot of that health and wealth preaching out there. Uh, I'm not saying that. God may bless you financially the more you give, but God may bless you in other ways as well. Um, the important thing is, is that we give, and we give with, with the right attitude and the right heart and the right motives. That's the important thing. I do want to talk about accomplishments. You know, we have had some accomplishments here. Not every church can say that. We've had, had some... We've been able to do some good things this, this year. Uh, we had three clothing giveaways this, this past year in 2021. And one of those uh, uh, giveaways, we gave away school supplies. I believe we gave away almost uh, 50 backpacks, if I'm correct, you may remember. Um, there was, I think, around 38 or 39 or 40 book, uh, backpacks, and then we gave away additional 10 or 11, and we ran out of book bags, but we had gave them like a, a Walmart bag or a Kroger bag or something with school supplies. So, you know, for a church our size to give away 50 uh, school supplies, I, mean, I think that's phenomenal. Um, and we also had a back to school kickoff event where we had uh, food and inflatables, and we had quite a bit of people from the community that came to that. Did we get any of those people? Not yet, but hey, when one of those people start looking for a church or start thinking about church, they think a little like, hey, that church down the street or down at the corner of the Dean Road, North Street, you know, they, they gave me free food and had something for the kids. So you don't know how seeds are planted or watered. And, and you don't always reap those things right away. You know, that might be six months from now, it might be a year from now, where somebody starts looking for a church. They'll remember that church that gave them school supplies or gave them clothes or had that event for their kids. And so that's how you need to look at things. All of the things that we do are investments. You know, typically we want to know how much does that cost or how much is that going to be. I've been in churches like that. We had to, you know, they were like McScrooge McDuck or whatever, you know. The, the, he was like, you know, the Scrooge who didn't want to, you know, pinch, pinch, pinch. I've been in places like that. And I would always say that the con, you know, I would always make a comment, you know, you need to look at, you know, it's, I understand we want to be good stewards of our money, but you also need to see that you're making investments. You can't put financial numbers on souls, you know what I mean? You know, the things that we do it, uh, as far as for the community, those are investments in our community, that we want to be good neighbors and good servants of those things. And so I look at it that way, and I hope you will too. Um, like I said before, we were able to stop, start back our small groups in 2021. We started back our Sunday school and our kids' church in 2021, so we've got all of those going at full force again. We were also able to have our holiday dinner uh, in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We had that this year. We had a good crowd. I believe there was over 50 here for our, for our, our, our Thanksgiving Christmas dinner. I don't know. Is it a thanks Christmas dinner? I don't know. It was kind of in between there. But the uh, holiday dinner, we had that. And, and then in 2022, we're bringing back our fifth Sunday uh, meals uh, after uh, fifth Sundays. If any of you that are new here, uh, every time we have a fifth Sunday in the month, we have a dinner after church uh, and, a, and a pitch in or carry in. Everybody brings brings something. So um, we are going to have that. And actually, our next one, I believe, is at the end of January. Is there five, five Sundays in January? So at the end of this month, we're going to have one. So that's, are we still having one? Somebody, give me Let's, do it. Let's do it. All right. So we got that going for us. And so I think that's, that's a, a, a positive accomplishment that we can get back to having fellowship. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that we've missed during this whole pandemic is being together and, and being able to have some sense of normalcy and have some sense of, of wanting to uh, spend time together. Fellowship is important. Um, I know isolation of, and being away from people affects us all, and it affected me as well as some of you all. So it's good to be able to get together and do things together. Uh, this past year, we had our first membership class. Um, and we had 13 people attend that, and, and hopefully we'll have another one uh, this year. And, and, and again, that's for people who are, are wanting to know about being a church member, and it's also for people that are already members and just want to learn a little bit more about the church. You, you can all certainly come to that, and we'll definitely try to have one of those again. 
we did buy Christmas presents. Uh, this is partly through the church and partly uh, through by CODIS, uh, our ladies' ministry, but we bought presents for uh, 10 kids at Zane Trace. And we also bought presents uh, for a family. Uh, many of you might remember the family, the lady that lived back here past the church that was had her four grandchildren. Uh, we bought Christmas presents for them. Sadly, uh, the grandma passed away here a couple of weeks ago um, on December 14th. I don't know if everybody. Uh, she brought her kids. She was here that day. We had all the inflatables and brought our four grandkids. And, and so, um, anyway. Um, the biological mom had reached out uh, and let us know she passed away, but also the, the, the kids um, um, needed some Christmas. So we were, uh, I think Lori really took, uh, Lori Brooks back there and, and Becky Borland really took that and, and was able to go out and do that and make that happen on a, on a day's notice, uh, a half a day's notice really. So appreciate uh, Lori and Becky doing that for us. But anyway, we're doing our part, you know. You know, four kids getting a Christmas they wouldn't otherwise have is a big deal. These kids at school, matter of fact, Becky afforded me an email yesterday uh, from, the, from the teacher at uh, St. Trace thanking us, uh, and those kids saying, you know, some of those kids wouldn't have Christmas if it wasn't for the things that we bought them in their class. So anyway, it's just, just a, a lot of positives that come out of that. And again, you, you may not think that's a big deal, but I always look at everything as planting seeds, <coughs> watering seeds, and just... Anything we can do to get Jesus. I don't care about as much about getting Adina Rhodes' name out there or my name out there as I care about getting Jesus' name out there. And if people uh, can, can feel Jesus or get some, you know, there's so many negative things out there. There's so many things that, that, that are negative. And even sometimes Christianity churches get, get a negative, you know, a negative uh, thing said about them or, or, or people are, are skeptical or that or they've had bad experiences. And so it's good when we can give Jesus a good name out there. And so I'm thankful that we were able to do those small things. Uh, one of our church camps, House Mill, uh, had a, uh, if you remember back last year, we had a really bad storm. Uh, they, they had a lot of, uh, of ice damage from, from trees breaking and, and doing things. And they had a lot of extra damage that they didn't budget for. And so we were uh, able to send the church camp a, a special uh, offering to help offset the cost of, of all the damage that they had. And other churches did that as well. Um, another thing that we did, I don't know if I got a, I ain't got that far yet. <laughs> uh, just some things you probably didn't notice that, that we did. Uh, we, I, we probably didn't notice we painted the walls. Uh, Pacey specifically painted the walls. <laughs> Uh, in here that were dark and then out there in the, in the lobby. That was done this year. Um, there, these, there are lights that run across the sides here. If you can't see them, they're hidden, but you can see the light coming out on the sides here. Uh, all of those were replaced with LED lights. Um, and, and, and you notice there's no humming anymore. If you used to hear humming, uh, that's where that came from. But we got all those uh, light fixtures replaced uh, this year. Uh, one of our... Uh, uh, AC units, uh, I, I think I've, I've been here two summers, both summers we've had to replace an AC unit. <laughs> uh, but we replaced one in 2020, we replaced one again in 2021. Uh, you know every time that happens, that's not cheap. Um, we uh, replaced all the light fixtures out in the lobby. Remember, out, if you paid attention out in the lobby, there was like uh, 107 ceiling fans out there. Uh, <laughs> There's a bunch of ceiling fans out there, all those have been replaced with new fixtures. Uh, We've got new uh, towel dispensers, automatic towel dispensers in the bathrooms out there. Um, we also put in a new ramp uh, at our main entrance. Uh, and we also, the, the ramp that was under the portico, we, we put steps back there. Um, we, we got new banners for all the seasons in here. Um, recently, the nursery was updated. Uh, we also had the, the library in, in the uh, main office there reorganized. So a lot of things behind the scenes that maybe some of us didn't notice or didn't see happen. And I think it's good for you guys to, to notice those things. Uh, and we're not done with that. I'll get into the, the future plans here in a little while. But, but I just want to let you know there's lots of little projects that, that were, were done uh, this past year uh, that maybe you didn't notice or maybe you didn't see or maybe you didn't hear about. We don't always uh, share all of those publicly in, you know, in, in a service, but, but I want to let you know uh, that those things happen. It, one of the tendencies that happens in churches is when you come to a church for a long time, you kind of get used to things, you know what I mean? You, you don't pay attention to things as much. Uh, you might notice that tearing the carpet, but then after you walk by it a thousand times, you just kind of get used to it. Um, I have uh, what I call fresh eyes, you know. I haven't been in this church for 20, 30, or 40 years. I've been here for two and a half years, so uh, it's easier for someone like me to notice things and see things. 
but one of the things that's important for us, and one of the things we discuss in our board meetings is, you know, we have this older building and we need to start keep, you know, we need to start working to have a, keep a running list going of things we want to do to keep uh, improving the building and, and make it, uh, you know, this, we're the church, not the building. So I want you to understand, you know, we're all the church, this is just a facility, but you still want to be good stewards and take care of this facility so that we can use it for ministry and church services and meetings and all those sort of things. And you also don't want to be an eyesore in the community. And believe it or not, uh, I've been to lots of seminars and lots of conferences. I've even read books on this. And the way a church looks does affect people's coming to it. If they go down to your nursery or your kids' classrooms and, a, and, a, and it looks like a hoarder's in there or it looks like a 1910 or something like that, they're, they're probably like, I don't think I want my kids to go and leave them down there. Uh, or if you never, you know, you've been by churches that never mow their grass and never keep up the outside. I mean, those things, do, people do pay attention to those type of things, believe it or not. We do it when we go to restaurants or stores. I mean, I'm sure there, uh, there's a couple stores in Telecom here that you probably wouldn't use the restroom there because they're so bad looking. Anyway, can, I, can I get an amen? I mean, yeah. uh, you know, but, uh, you know, so we do. You know, I'm not going to go in there. Hey, restaurant's dirty. I'm not going to eat there. You know, we have those things. Now, I know we have a health department that does those things that, that keeps track of that stuff and tries to monitor that. But, you know, the same is true of churches. You know, when people come here, we want them to see that we care about our church facilities, that it looks nice, it smells nice. We can't always tell what the sewer plant does and what the, the paper mill does. Uh, you know, I think we get uh, blamed sometimes for a lot of those things. Or if you're just like me, I'm starting to get used to it. I've lived here for a while, and I'm starting to get used to the paper mill. Uh, what smell? I don't smell anything. But uh, anyway... The other, one other thing I want to talk about is our missions. I know that that's kind of small there. Uh, at least it is what I'm looking for back there. But we have uh, several missions that, that we support. Uh, local, statewide, na na national, and global. You know, we try to have a balance of, of those things. That we're doing stuff right here in our own community, in our own state, um, in, in America, and even beyond. And so I kind of listed those in that order. A list of Hope Pregnancy Center and Hope Clinic are both missions that we support uh, financially here in town. And I know, uh, I don't know, I know, Christy, you volunteer at Hope Clinic, don't you? Does anybody else volunteer at Hope Clinic? Uh, I volunteer sometimes at Elizabeth. Uh, I've went over there and, and uh, taught a dad's class uh, before. And we, we certainly uh, are involved. We do the, the baby bottles every year and, and other things. But we're involved in Elizabeth Hope and, and, Hope, and Hope Clinic here in town. Also, the Good Samaritan Food Bank uh, we, we uh, give money to. We have our two church camps up there, Butler Springs and House Mill, that we support uh, financially. And some of you may be, I don't know if anybody in here, uh, we support the, the camps um, as a church, but individuals, they have programs where individuals can support the camps monthly and, and, and do that. Uh, I don't know if any of you do that, but, but that's available. And, Person to Person Ministries in Kiowa Evangelistic Association. Um, we support those ministries. We also support the Christian Children's Home of Ohio up in Worcester. Uh, it's Worcester. I learned that. It's not Worcester. It's what I always called it. Kind of like a rooster, except with a W. Worcester, but it's Worcester. Uh, uh, we also support Kentucky Christian University, Hippo Valley Christian Mission, and then Bethlehem Living Water. Um, those are several ministries that we support. We do have a missions committee here at church, and uh, Ron and, and Patty kind of oversee that. And I've asked Ron to kind of give up, uh, get up, and uh, tell us uh, how much we've gave, given to missions this year, and uh, anything else he wants to say about uh, those missions. First of all, as a member of the congregation and, a, and an officer, I'd like to say thank you. You all are quite quite generous in your giving. Um, I'm going to go down the list. It's not in the same order as Jason's. But uh, the missions committee gets its funding directly from you all. 10% of whatever the church offering is that, that particular month, quarter, year, 10% is what the mission committee gets. Um, we, typic we have uh, uh, quite a few missions that we support. And typically, there's no money left. Once we write the checks that we normally, for the amounts that we normally write, there's no money left over. We don't have, a, typically, don't have a balance. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but the money's not just sitting there doing nothing. So, starting with the Hope Clinic, uh, 
These are all totals for 2021. We gave $900. And I, I, again, I don't know if you all know exactly what these are, so I'm going to give a brief explanation. The Hope Clinic is, they provide an alternative to uh, young families, young women, for, to abortion. I'm sorry, the Hope Clinic, you're right. The Hope Clinic provides some medical services in the community for the same group. Yeah. Okay, uh, Hope Clinic, $900. Butler Springs Camp, I think everybody knows what that is, $1,000. House Mill Christian Assembly, another summer camp and meeting facility, $1,000. Hippo Valley in Africa, which is administered out of Kentucky, um, is $1,000. Bethlehem Living Water, also an African mission. Uh, India. India, I'm sorry, India. $1,000. Christian Children's Home of Ohio, $600. I don't know if you... Uh, Christian's Children's Home is a, uh, is a facility for children that cannot or do not live at home or don't have a home. Um, Kiowa, $800. Person to Person Ministries, $800. Bicota, $420. Yeah, they support a, a child. Kentucky Christian University Scholarship Fund, and it's earmarked for their scholarship fund, not their general fund, is $1,200. Elizabeth's Hope, uh, $1,200, and that's the same organization that provides the Hope Clinic. Elizabeth Hope provides education and supplies and counseling for young mothers, young couples, as an alternative to abortion. Uh, and, and finally, we have given to Jason's education $1,200 last year. He has taken classes uh, to further his education and become more of a professional, so we thought we needed to support him. So if that total for last year is $11,120. Briefly, um, I want to let you know who's on the committee. And the committee is open to new members at any time. Do you want to be a member? Come and see us. Uh, Jason and Cheryl, Christy Landman, uh, myself and Patty, and Kendra and Carrie. Do you have any questions? That's it for me. All right. Thank you, Ron. I had to run off and get a drink of water, so. Let, let me just make a comment yeah. on our missions. Several times during the year, we try to have representatives of those missions come and speak to the congregation. And we're going to continue to do that. And we'll also periodically update you on some of the other missions that uh, maybe don't have the ability to send representatives. Yeah, this last year we had. Uh, uh, Tim Yankee from Howes Mill was here. Um, uh, I know uh, Al Sir Hall from, uh, from Hippo Valley was here. And actually, we had some of the students from Hippo Valley here uh, a while back. Uh, we also had uh, both uh, guys that work at Person to Persons, uh, Kevin uh, Whitsett and Alex Eddy were here this, this 